eating meat, eggs and dairy is all part of a healthy diet, or at least that's what we've been told. So why is veganism becoming so popular? Veganism and plant-based nutrition is on the rise in the UK. A recent report by Waitrose found that one in eight Britons are now either vegetarian or vegan, and a third of UK customers have deliberately reduced the amount of meat that they eat or cut it out entirely. I've been vegan myself now for about six months, and I wanted to find out why it's becoming so popular with other people too. Is it hard to stop eating meat and animal products? And how have people gone about doing it? Can we actually be happier and healthier as herbivores? And could this help save the planet for future generations? To start with, let's find out why people have decided to become vegan in the first place. My first like ever thought was probably at the university when you know there, it was just a time of like lots of excess and lots of drinking and eating. Uh, and I remember having the odd thought of this just seems a bit strange, you know, to, to eat an animal. But like a good friend of mine was vegan, and we'd every now and again we'd have a conversation, and and I would always say to him, you know, I I just I can't imagine going vegan. It's too extreme. These were my thoughts, you know, and this is what I said to him. But then I started finding more and more articles about, um, you know, promoting the, the beneficial aspects in terms of health of a plant-based diet. Uh, and I was just, run personally, I was just running out of excuses not to go vegan, you know, and, and, and this was a conversation with him. Um, you know, any, any argument that I had could quite logically be countered. And eventually I just thought, well, it totally makes sense. So I've got to do it. No, I just started researching stuff. I was seeing stuff on social media. I just kept I was reading loads of stuff. And then I'd, I'd come to know about being vegetarian. Um, and then the ve veganism, you know, was kind of in the media a lot more as well. So researched all about that. And then just literally, it was like, it was as if there was a like switch in my head. And it was like, that. that's it. I can't do it anymore. I, I want to be vegan. I can't be exploiting animals and eating animals and consuming animals anymore. It's just not right. Well, my mum was becoming vegan, but I'm like older. And then it's, if like I was a grown up, I think I would be vegan. Because I do really love animals, but it's just hurting them. You get they get crammed into little tiny cages so they can't move at all. I was veggie before um, when I was quite young. Um, it was after seeing a documentary on, you know, animal welfare um, in Europe at the time. Back, I was still in school back then, and you know that really shocked me. And at the time, I didn't really make the connection with the dairy industry. But as I grew older, I kind of informed myself more on that, and that just scared me even more, to be honest. So, yeah, for me, it was the, initially it was animal welfare. Um, you know, the, the fact that I don't think we're treating animals the way they should be treated. It was definitely the What the Health documentary on Netflix. Um, I just find that completely shocking. I wasn't really surprised about the meat aspect because I always knew that was not healthy for us. Um, but it was dairy that I was really shocked about because obviously we've been told from a young age that dairy is really important for your bones and growth and things and um, so I was really shocked about just the effects that it had on your body and also as well like the animal side of things like just how they're treated and how the cows are constantly impregnated and yeah it just didn't seem ethical um, and then as well knowing the effects it has on the environment like the amount of methane that cows produce and how that contributes to like global warming. So I think it was a combination of those three things, but I think definitely it was more the health aspect, just how bad dairy is for health. It was pretty much overnight. Um, I had, my mum just sent me, uh, told me to watch something kind on of Netflix called Food Choices. And you know, when you watch Netflix and it just continues rolling and then it, it turned on to Cowspiracy. And straight after that, I was kind of drew the curtains and like, <laughs> just out of paranoia and think, wow, this is all, you know, a set system where um, you're sort of told that, you know, cow's milk's good for you and it's good for calcium. But there was actually something, there was another truth that I didn't really know about or hadn't gone into explore too much. Two years ago, I, you know, I would never have dreamt that I'd be completely plant-based at, at this point. Um, my wife, 
was already eating less, well, basically no meat. She was in a little bit of fish, a little bit of dairy. Um, was encouraging me to at least reduce the meat. Coming from a, a sort of strength and conditioning background, um, protein has always been at the, the forefront. You've got to have your protein. That's what we were led to believe. She found me certain pro athletes from lots of different disciplines, whether it's from you know Olympic athletes, strength, track, um, endurance, that were using plant-based uh, approaches to their diet and seeing remarkable results. So I thought there's got to be something in this. Did the research, saw that these people were having fantastic results, and that's really what you know inspired me to first reduce the the protein consumption anyway, because we then we couldn't find anything that would back up why we should be taking 100, two, sorry, 200 grams plus a day of protein. So um, yeah, it, it seemed the right time to you know do both at the same time. A confluence of factors, I would say. Uh, I've had some severe health problems for a really long time, so I think from a health standpoint, that was um, something that. I wanted to consider it really strongly. Um, I was paralyzed in 2008, so I had Guillain-Barre syndrome. Um, I've got quite a few autoimmune conditions, and then I've suffered with fibromyalgia for quite a while, um, and that become debilitating. I was in bed for days on end with horrendous pain, and I actually thought I was gonna have to give up working completely. Uh, it was really robbing me of, of my life, so that was a, a big reason for it. Um, another thing is, is the animals. I'm an animal lover. I know I couldn't hurt an animal myself and I didn't really see the value or the need to do it. And I just remember driving down the road, seeing a livestock glory and, you know, really <laughs> it caught me up and I, I didn't eat much meat anyway. Um, I did eat some wild fish. That was kind of the main thing I ate, but it, it really got to me then. Um, and also the environmental factors. I'm a, a really into you know being more eco-friendly and I was starting to see that the impact that the um, livestock industry was having on, on the planet so it's more what reason would you have for not doing it I think. <laughs> the one thing that I can distill it down to that kind of clicked in my mind was when I watched um, a documentary on Netflix Cowspiracy and um, we were captivated all the way through it and it, it's a documentary that focuses on the environmental um, impact of animal products um, and its conclusion by the end, and the viewer is taken along the journey of, well, the only sustainable way if we care about protecting the environment is to really, really radically rethink how we, how we you know, um, conduct our, our diet and stuff like that. And then once I'd heard it, I just could not, um, I couldn't go back. It, it was something that clicked in my mind and I, I couldn't, in, in my own kind of beliefs, I, I couldn't then be fine with consuming animal products. So that's when I decided to, to go vegan. There seem to be three very compelling reasons for ditching meat and dairy from our plates. The first is about animal welfare. Is it right that animals are treated like commodities just because we like the taste of their flesh? Why do we treat dogs and cats like our best friends, but cows and chickens like our slaves? I've watched documentaries about what goes on behind the scenes at farms and slaughterhouses, which is so distressing and disturbing. Animals are living, feeling creatures and have just as much a right to peaceful existences as we do. Secondly, it appears that plant-based whole food diets are actually better for our health and there's loads of scientific evidence out there to support this. And finally, we all know that we need to do something collectively to reduce the impact of climate change. The UN believes that a global shift towards plant-based food is vital if we're to combat the worst effects of climate change. Globally, animal agriculture is responsible for more greenhouse gases than all the world's transportation systems combined. So if we all decided to go vegan, or at least cut down the amount of meat that we eat, the planet would be in a much better condition for our children. The people that I've spoken to have clearly done lots of research themselves and watched loads of documentaries on the subject. And by re-educating themselves, they've all made a very clear decision that they no longer want to consume animal products. For many people though, eating meat, eggs and dairy is such a big part of their lives. So is it hard to become vegan? And what's the best way about doing it? When I decided to stop eating meat, I decided to go vegan, but um, I, I, I kind of planned it out. So it, I had a long-term plan for, for switching from meat to vegan. And 
and it basically was cutting out one ingredient at a time, quite literally. You know, so the, for the first one I cut out was, uh, well, obviously meat, and then I was vegetarian for, like I said, a month. Uh, and then it was milk. I found milk was the absolute the easiest one to cut out, you know, and, and so that was easy. And then it was eggs and then it was cheese and, and it was just one ingredient at a time. Uh, and during that time, I started researching recipes, what, how I can alter my cooking. Um, I, I found it was, it kind of reminded me of being a student again, in terms of learning to cook. That I'd have to just just learn slightly different techniques and different ways of cooking. Just, I found in practice it was a lot easier than people think. Um, I think even if you find yourself stuck in a steakhouse, you can order a jacket potato and steamed vegetables. Uh, and if, with a little preparation, I think it's, it's quite easy to do. More and more places are adapting menus. Uh, I think, yeah, and from that point of view, it was, it was much simpler than I thought. And I think once you know the things that you know and you feel so passionate about it, it becomes even easier. When I switched, because I was more concerned about the nutrients almost, it sounds like really like, you know, scientific, but I was more concerned about, right, I want to get the nutrients for my body. I wasn't really that concerned with like, all these flavors and things. Um, the, the change of diet, it, it didn't, did, I didn't really find it that hard. And the long, I run, weirdly, the longer I was vegan, the more I thought, well, why would I, why would I go back? It, my, my taste buds almost changed and my, my wants and things changed to the point where I was excited to eat a big bowl of like vegetables and healthy food and the thought of kind of like eating some like greasy cheesy burger I was just like I, I just don't want that. I don't think it's really hard I think all you have to do is um, just say um, just think about the bad things about it not that it tastes nice just think that what it's actually doing. Because after what I'd watched on like documentaries and things like that I was a hundred percent like I don't want to eat those foods again like it was enough for me to just be like yeah that's it and um, but before I fully went plant-based I didn't eat meat so the only meat that I ate was chicken so I think it was a lot easier for me because I'd already given up like red meat and fish and um, so it was only really chicken and dairy that I had to give up Um, but because there were so many alternatives it was relatively easy so easy <laughs> ridiculously easy um i think the thing is as well is that in this day and age in particular there's so much out there so much in the shops now i mean i've seen a massive difference just a bit from being vegan from like january 2018 to the here and now there's so many more products available in that short space of time i didn't think oh you can never have this or you can never have that or you can't eat this it was more about the things that i can eat um, i was focusing on all you know, the nutritious food, all the things that I enjoyed eating, um, you know, just found vegan recipes for them. And to be honest, I don't feel, I don't think the entire time I've ever felt like I'm missing out. So the first thing, particularly for us, was when we uh, had to substitute the meat. Uh, and that's really what we did first. It was a case, well, what do we like eating? You know, particularly chicken, I think that was probably our main meat source. We took the chicken away and we replaced it, you know, with beans, legumes, uh, chickpeas, lentils. So um, we, we, we love, as I say, cooking the different types of Asian cuisine. So we found that those have worked exceptionally well with plant-based, uh, you know, ingredients. Went straight onto Facebook and just started typing in vegans, um, UK vegans, and then I found Birmingham vegans and they were actually having a pizza night on the Tuesday. It just let me know that there's other people who are sort of going on a similar journey and who've, um, who've been educated, educating themselves about different food choices and where the food comes from. So that kind of put me on the right path really, meeting other, other people straight away, um, just let me know that actually I'm not, it's not a strange thing to do. There are other people out there who, you know, think in a similar way. We came across the, the Plant Pure Nation documentary and then as part of that documentary and how it pans out uh, in the US, uh, groups were starting to, to, to form uh, around the US where people could uh, you know, turn up at somebody's house or a, or a venue and actually try you know, plant-based foods uh, mixed with people that are already eating you know, the plant-based vegan way. Um, so we thought, right, well, okay, well, let's see, um, you know, if we could do something similar in the UK. So, uh, yeah, we created our own pod uh, the back end of last year, and uh, it's been a real success. Had a lot of uh, interest from people already, as I say, following those sort of diet protocols. But um, 
I say what's really great to see is people that, that don't currently eat a plant-based diet and are just inquisitive around you know, um, the sort of foods that we, uh, that we eat. I'm actually surprised at how easy people have found it to become vegan. I thought that most people would find it really hard. It seems like a good approach is to plan it out and do it one ingredient at a time and then find plant-based substitutes and recipes so it's not too overwhelming. There are so many alternatives in the supermarkets now, which is making it much easier. And most restaurants offer vegan options too. Something that can be quite hard to overcome though is the social expectation from friends and family to eat meat. And I know from personal experience that being vegan can sometimes make it feel like you're the odd one out in your peer group. A great way to overcome this though is by finding groups online or in person of other people who have decided to eat a plant-based diet because being around other people really does help to provide extra motivation and inspiration if the going ever gets tough. But by putting in a little bit of effort, there are definitely plenty of rewards to be had. I started just getting regular blood tests just as part of my training. Um, and so, so I, I, I tracked all my metrics over, over the years from be, before I was vegan to after. And, and I just noticed a positive um, increase in, uh, well, all the metrics going into a positive direction. So things that were borderline are now in the green, um, just generally getting healthier. Uh, uh, to the point where the the organisation that organised the tests got in contact with me to set, to basically ask me questions about what I'm doing because they the way they said it I was in the top three percent of people doing these blood tests and they wanted to know <laughs> what the secret was how they said it um, and yeah I told them I, I went onto a, a plant based diet and and then they actually said um, anecdotally that. They they've seen that trend. They've seen they've asked the question, the same question, to the people that are getting good blood tests, and the thing that they're hearing over and over again is I switch to a plant based diet. Yeah, with regards to having more energy and fuel into my body, I I really do think um, energy is is the biggest thing for me. When, when I, I've spoken to my mates, and the only real thing that they can distill it down to is you just don't have that lethargy, that fatigue. Like I'm not saying you don't get tired, but it's it's different. You just I, I feel like I'm, I'm more I'm just more awake all the time um, because you know the 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 food that I'm eating I'm, I'm I'm eating like oats, all these like high high carbohydrate, high energy foods. Um, you know, and and like before, there was just that kind of like drag a lot of the time. Whereas now, I'm just I'm ready to go. You know, if, as long as I've had a good night's sleep, and you know, I'm I'm like I'm ready to go. Whereas I definitely did not have that before. So I then felt my endurance improve uh, and then strength uh, and then particularly recovery. So after an intense workout, whether it's a, you know, a 10K run or, you know, a heavy session in the gym, I found that the aches, uh, the, the, the DOMS or delayed onset muscle soreness was really a thing of the past. And I, I rarely get it these days unless it's a, a super intense workout where I'd, I'd expect it. But again, I would recover a lot faster. So I've actually noticed a lot of benefits. Um... I feel much more healthier in myself um, I just noticed that I've lost weight and I feel like um, I sleep better, I don't feel hungry as often um, and I feel like the foods that I do have like fill me up. The first thing I've really noticed was sleep. My sleep improved. Um, I was consuming a lot more water because uh, with the higher levels of protein I was, uh, I believe my kidneys were under a lot of, a lot of pressure, so I was consuming a lot more water during the, during, during the night time in bed. That means obviously more trips to the, to the bathroom. So uh, initially that was probably the first change that I started to see. Then my skin started to, I suppose, clear. It was never, um, uh, you know, it was never sort of spotty or things like that, but it was just, it just became clearer. My eyes became clearer. We didn't do it because of eczema, but then when I had it, like, um, I had really, really bad expert, but now it's just gone. I get a little bit of an itch sometimes, but not really. Um, I've not, I can't remember the last time I've had a flare up with the fibromyalgia, and that is massive. Um, and I used to have really severe allergic reactions this time of year where my eyes would actually swell shut and my entire body would be covered with welts. <laughs> Um, and I think that was all part of an autoimmune sort of response. 
and this is the first year that that hasn't happened in a very long time. So that that is amazing. <laughs> so for years and years, I've suffered with autoimmune issues. Um, so you know, it could be skin conditions, could be um, joint inflammation. You know, like a variety of stuff really. Um, and sort of 2017, um, I just got worse and worse, also triggered by a really busy job I had at the time. So it's like a lot of stress, a lot of meat, a lot of dairy. And I decided that, you know, I wanted to start really eliminating all those inflammatory um, um, foods, basically, such as meat, dairy, um, mostly. Um, and yeah, so I started doing that and I would not change it now. My health has improved so much. The main thing was for me was that um, a few years ago I had to have a full hysterectomy. So I was, I was um, well, I don't take HRT, but as a result of that, my joints were very, very sore. So in the morning before I got out of bed, you know, my, my hands were kind of like claws and I had to really loosen them up before I got out of bed. Same with the rest of my body as well. Oh my goodness, so weird. I'm going to say literally within a month of turning vegan, I don't have that anymore. It's not that you just can miss out on all the foods that loads of people eat. You get even better food. You can get really nice chocolate. You can get um, like really nice pizza. You can get really nice other things. And the other day, um, we had a picnic and there was loads of people who weren't vegan. I had a giant bar of chocolate, so I shared it out with everyone and said it's even, b and then they said it's even better than normal chocolate. There appears to be no end of benefits of eating a plant-based diet. Better sleep, clearer skin, more energy, and it's made a massive difference to people who have been battling with chronic diseases for years like fibromyalgia, eczema, and other autoimmune conditions. And I think it's really interesting how Vladimir got his blood work done before and after becoming a vegan, which proves that plant-based nutrition really is better for us at a biological level. It can still feel like a daunting prospect for people to make the transition to a vegan lifestyle. So if you're thinking about being vegan yourself, here are some tips for how you can go about doing it. First of all, I think it's really important that before people decide whether they want to do it, that they actually read the information, like whether that's through documentaries or online, like reading like research papers. Um, because I think people, it's important that people like make an informed decision um, and it's like for themselves, because obviously it's the rest of your life potentially. And it's like such a big decision because you're going to be changing how you're eating on a daily basis. So I think in order for it to be sustainable, like people have to read the information so that they feel more motivated. Because I definitely found at the start when it was difficult that just having the information in the back of my head and remembering, okay, this is bad for your health or like the animals are suffering or it's bad for the environment. I just felt that helped me say, no, like I want to stay plant-based. So I think read the information first and then get a good cookbook. I think you have to plan, and I think it's like anything, you know, um, if you don't plan, you plan to fail, essentially. So it's having a plan, it's having a, a catalogue of recipes so that you can, um, you know, rotate those. So whether you, you repeat anything once a week, but it, it's having um, those, those recipes there to, to sort of fall back on. Otherwise, you will resort to grabbing something for the takeaway or, I say, going around the supermarket, not knowing what to buy. I suppose go at your own pace um, and, and do your research and find a, a group of like-minded people if you can, uh, because if you have a support network, that's helpful. It can sometimes be overwhelming when you're around people that don't necessarily understand or want to support you. And um, they say, oh, go ahead, one piece of bacon's not going to hurt. So I think if you can find a support ne network, whether it's online or in an actual group in your community, that could be really helpful. Um, and don't beat yourself up if you go somewhere and you accidentally have something with a bit of dairy in it. Just take it slow and make changes that you can live with. Um, and just keep a positive attitude and an open mind. Yeah, just one by one, um, you know, change your habits slowly. And, and don't be too harsh on yourself when you do slip up because, you know, it, it does happen. And especially in the beginning, I think it can be overwhelming because you do have to check labels and you do have to, you know, make sure that what you're getting is um, is actually vegan because sometimes you know there are hidden 
kind of <laughs> ingredients and stuff. Take it slow. Um, use the internet. The internet is just an absolute like uh, mine of resources. Um, I mean, I'm a um, a lover of YouTube and, and the amount of, uh, of vegan YouTubers out there that they're all coming at coming at it from a different angle. There are some with recipes, some people with recipes, other people with you know how to speak to your family about it, other people where to go and shop and and all these different things. Use the resources that are out there and don't think that you're on your own. Um, just you know, reach out to people and they will help. And if you're in like a university or if there's a local community group, um, and, uh, then talk to them. If there's not, set one up. And there might be people, might be a person next door that's thinking the same thing. Oh, I'm not sure I really want to you know, take this change. Do it together. Individuals on their own should come together and be like a collective because we're, we're much stronger like that. Um, so I think, yeah, those probably be my two pieces of advice. There's always talk of a triangle, so it's to do with the environment, it's to do with your health, and also to do with animal rights. And just have a look at all of those areas and then weigh up the option and see, well, do I actually need to eat this um, or not? And, you know, have a look at some of the, the more influential people on Instagram and just see what types of foods they're eating. Um, and if you do read about the health benefits of it, it's, it's something that you can't really say, well, I, d I don't want to do. If you, if you want to live, um, not necessarily just a longer life, but if you want to have a, a better quality in your later life, then really it's something that we should all be, we should all be thinking about. I think it's such a great thing that more and more people are deciding to become vegan. It's better for our health, the welfare of animals and the environment. So the arguments really are stacking up. And now that plant-based foods are becoming more available, it's much easier to make that change. I've been really blown away by the personal benefits that people have found. And not a single person has regretted their decision to be vegan. If you'd like to stop eating meat and animal products, I hope that you've been inspired by watching this and feel assured that it's not as difficult as it might seem at first. And finally, I'd like to say a big thank you to everyone who's taken part in this documentary. It was great to meet them all, and it's really motivated me personally to continue my own plant-based journey.